Now it's my pleasure to introduce our presenter, Andy Carlson. Andy Carlson joined SHEO in September 2011 and is currently a senior policy analyst. He manages and compiles the annual State Higher Education Finance Report and works on various other policy studies at SHEO, including the State Policy Resource Connection Project, or SPARC, and the Periodic Tuition, Fee, and Financial Aid Policy Survey. Prior to joining SHEO, Mr. Carlson worked for six years at the Colorado Department of Higher Education as the Budget and Financial Aid Director. In this role, he managed and developed governing board and state-level budget appropriation requests. In addition, he was responsible for the collection, analysis, and presentation of institution-level financial data, including tuition and fee revenue, student FTE, and detailed revenue and expenditure reporting. With that, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Andy. Thank you, Chris, and thanks everyone for joining us today for the CHEF webinar. Um, again, my name is Andy Carlton. I'm a senior policy analyst here at CHEO, I'm responsible for the CHEF project for the past two years. And I think most of the audience today are CHEF data providers um, at state higher education agencies. And I just really want to extend a sincere thank you to all of you um, who provide the data for us each year. I know the survey is not particularly easy. It's fairly straightforward for some states and really complicated for others, um, just depending on how the states are set up. And I know asking for data during the fall when most of you are preparing your governor's budget request or your state budget request is also not the best time. Um, but I would just want to re just want to say thank you. And then, as Chris indicated, prior to coming to SHEO, I was a state budget officer and chef data provider for Colorado. And I remember the first year I had to pull data for chef, and my boss said, "Do this survey." And my response was, at least to myself, "What is SHEO?" I really didn't know, and I didn't. Um, and so I had to dig down and find out any notes that my predecessor had left and rebuild the survey for Colorado. And uh, once I submitted the data, I really didn't think much about the CHEF report, to be perfectly honest, as the data provider. Um, I really didn't have any context for what the report was or how it's utilized. And my goal for this webinar, in addition to sharing the findings that we find from the 2012 report, is to provide that context. Um, so I want to begin the webinar with, with a little history about the CHEF project and why SHEO undertook it, then talk about um, our CHEF metrics and how we adjust the data you guys provide. Um, and then I'll highlight the findings from the report and, and close with pointing out where we keep some additional um, chef-related resources that I think will be valuable um, to states moving forward. So a little history. We released the chef report this year on March 6th, um, which met my personal goal to get the information to you around the time that 2014 appropriations were being debated in most states, um, in most state legislatures. Um, and I have spoken recently with executive directors and CFOs from a couple of states, and I know that the, the data has been utilized in those processes, and um, you know that's one of our major goals for doing this report. So um, that that makes me happy. This was the tenth the tenth report that SHEO released. Um, we began this project in the early 2000s after um, there was a lull and um, a previous study that was no longer being done. And we decided, um, basically, SHEOs at the states asked us to take on this role so and to kind of build a state-level finance report again. So um, the data is originally built from Dr. Kent Halstead's Halstead Finance Survey, um, which he had built financial data at the state level for higher education financing going back to 1972. And um, he ceased publishing his study in 1998. Um, CHEO agencies asked us to um, move something forward that would be similar, and so that's what we built the work off of. So CHEO worked with Halstead, who agreed to transfer his data set to us, um, and this became the historical basis for CHEF moving forward. I imagine it took a great deal of work for the original CHEO staff to understand his data and figure out um, what data to collect moving forward to build a consistent um, trend, a consistent, a consistent data set for trend analysis and how to collect that data from states moving forward. So in 2004, we released the first CHEF report covering fiscal year 2003. And just a little more um, quick history, I think most of you know if you were around a couple years ago, in 2010, we combined 
um, we developed an online data collection tool called the SSDB State Support Database. Um, and we merged the collection of chefs each year with the collection of the grapevine data that Dr. James Palmer at Illinois State University handled. Um, and prior to this merger, you know, it's just, it became, you know, it was evident that uh, Dr. Palmer and Shio were asking for kind of similar data at the same time to the similar people. So it made sense to merge those two. Um, and so for the data providers that are on this call, page one of the survey in the SSDB covers the grapevine component, while page one along with the rest of the survey makes up the data we use for chefs. So a question I've gotten a few times um, in the last year and a half that I've been at Shio is what's the difference between grapevine and chef? And I think the answer to that question, the way I think about it, is that they serve two different purposes. Um, grapevine, which goes back to 1960 and is a pretty robust you know, set of information covering a long period of time, um, I think the benefit of grapevine is it provides that first look at what current year appropriations um, are for higher education state funding. It covers just state appropriations only. Um, there's no, and no adjustments are made to the data. So when you pull Grapevine, you're just getting the raw numbers um, and you know, you can do analysis year over year from that. And the goal for Grapevine each year is to really release those summary tables in December or early January each year. Chef, on the other hand, is really meant to be a more detailed look at the most recent completed fiscal year we take state funding, we add local components, um, and we also cover tuition revenue and enrollment information. Uh, we adjust the data for inflation and also account for enrollment mix and cost of living differences among the states. Chef goes back to 1980. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what CHEF does not measure, um, and this is tied to some of the calls we've gotten from reporters the last two years. Um, CHEF does not measure direct tuition rate increases. Um, and this, you know, what CHEF does measure is increases in net tuition revenue on a per student basis. Um, and that has shown a lot of, um, and, you know, that's received a lot of media attention. And um, reporters want to say, they want to take that increase in net tuition revenue to say that tuition rates have gone up by that percentage. So the answer is really not that simple. You can't look at the increase on a percentage basis in net tuition revenue and say that means if that went up 8% year over year, then tuition rates definitely went up 8% year over year. Tuition revenue, as I'm sure everyone knows, is covering a lot more than just rates. It's covering uh, enrollment growth is going to lead to increases in net tuition revenue. Changes in enrollment mix, if your state starts to see more non-resident students come in than normal, or more graduate students come in than, you know, normal history for your state, you know, that's going to impact and that's going to cause larger changes, most likely, in net tuition revenue. So, um, but, you know, I, I understand reporters are looking for the big score, the big, you know, the big headline a lot. and. Um, so it's just something to be careful about, and um, I always try to be very clear of what CHEF is and is not measuring. And the College Board is really a better source for specific tuition rate information. Moving on, and I know that wave chart in the bottom right-hand corner is small. I'm just saying that these um, three metrics in the middle make up that chart. We'll talk later uh, about that chart overall, and it'll be much bigger. Um, so this slide shows the, the five major CHEF metrics. State and local support is shown in total for the nation in the CHEF report at the beginning of the report. And for fiscal year 09 through 12, we decided to include the federal stimulus funds from the American Reinvestment and Recovery Act, or ERA, or ARA. Um, we included those in the state support numbers because they were really meant to offset reductions in state support and um, over that time, over the, the economic downturn and the Great Recession. The next three metrics that are um, kind of combined together here make up the national wave chart um, that we include in the CHEF report and covers 25 years of history. This is the chart that really gets the most attention, and I'll talk more about it later on in the presentation, but we take educational appropriations for public institutions from state and local sources, um, and we do that per student. We do the same for net tuition revenue per student, and then we track full-time enrollment in this chart. Educational appropriations include state dollars for financial aid, but do not include state support for research, agriculture extension programs, or medical schools. 
net tuition, that's educational appropriation. And then for net tuition, we take the gross tuition data that states provide, um, we uh, subtract out tuition paid by medical students, and we also deduct state and institutional financial aid um, from this total to arrive at net tuition. Especially on the state aid side, we don't want to, we're really trying to get a sense of what institutions have, um, what funding levels they have per student to provide instruction, and we want to back state aid out of this component because otherwise you kind of end up double counting it. Um, enrollment for CHEF is reported as full-time equivalent. And finally, the total educational revenue, the last metric here, is the sum of educational appropriations and net tuition. And we do take out from this number any amount of tuition that's going to cover debt service or capital financing. It's really meant to show the total revenue available to support instruction at the state. One more area to talk about before I'll jump into the findings of this year's report. Um, I do think it's important to highlight how we adjust the data. Um, so the first adjust adjustment that we make is HECA, and this is our higher education cost adjustment. And this is our inflation measure that we use. Um, instead of CPI or um, HEFI, the Higher Education Price Index, which was developed, um, I think, in the 19, late 60s, early 70s to provide um, a higher education-based inflation factor. Um, so to measure inflation over time, we adjust all dollars in CHEF to the current year, which would be fiscal year 2012 for this year's report. Um, so SHEO developed HECA as an alternative to the CPI and HEFI as a, mean, as a means to account for the market basket of goods that higher education must purchase, and that really is driven by salary costs and salary and personnel costs. So we construct it from two existing federal indices. So unlike HEPI, we're, we're really just using things that are out there. And um, those are the employee cost index, which we use to drive 75% of our HECA measure. And then the gross domestic product, product implicit price deflator for 25%. So for an example of how you would adjust um, a dollar, uh, an appropriation by inflation, let's say, Fiscal year 2011 appropriation is $1,000, which is a number that some states might joke or say they're hitting soon. Um, you divide by the corresponding HECA. So HECA for 2011 is 0 .9824, and that gives you FY11 appropriation taken to $2012 of 1018 So HECA versus CPI, um, there's been the last two years has been um, some criticism. I'm sure that's been before that, but that's the two years I've been here. There's been some criticisms of HECA um, from one main source, really, but the critics argue that HECA has historically grown more quickly than CPI and therefore overstates the amount of support institutions need in order to keep up with inflation. And then a further critique is that HECA is a meaningless figure for families' struggle to pay tuition costs. So from the student and family's perspective that are struggling to meet these costs, it, you know, they don't care that higher ed growth or inflation is, is higher. They're, they're meeting their own basket, market basket of goods from CPI, which would be, CPI would then be a more reasonable measure. So just real quickly, SHEO's response um, on this issue. You know, institutions of higher education, their primary costs are driven by personnel expenditures. I think that's pretty clear. Uh, it makes the bulk of the what you'd call the higher education market basket of goods. And CHEF's intent is and has always been to measure trends in revenue for educational delivery. And from that perspective and with that intent in mind, HECA is a reasonable means to compare available revenue to necessary expenditures at the institution and state level. And as a kind of an aside, there frankly, since 2007, there's been very little difference between CPI and HECA. Um, you know, the effects, the lingering effects of this downturn continue and salaries and personal income really haven't gone up. So the measures driving HECA aren't growing more quickly than CPI for the last couple of years. And in fact, since 2010, CPI has actually grown faster. Um, and speaking for myself personally, I, you know, I would agree that from the student's perspective and a family's perspective, meeting tuition costs, CPI would be a more, a better measure for tuition rate increases. But that's, Again, is not CHEF's intent. CHEF is tracking changes in tuition revenues. T 
two more adjustments to talk about, and this these adjustments are made to kind of the middle section of the report, all the state level data. We're really trying to do our best to make the state level data more comparable um, and more um, you know more comparable. So we do two things to the state per FTE numbers. We adjust for enrollment mix via our enrollment mix index, EMI, and we also adjust for cost of living differences using a COLA adjustment. So the enrollment mix is a, to adjust for differences in the mix of enrollment and costs among the types of institutions among the state. So if you have a state with a significantly larger than average community college system where a lot of students going to community colleges um, your EMI is going to be below 1, 1 1.0 being the U.S. average. And then similar for cost of living, we use um, an index developed by in 2003 by uh, Professor Barry. It's called the Barry Index, and it provides a single index for each state. So if you're above the 1.0, again, is the U.S., so if you're above that, you'd be like 1.1, 1.25 or something, and if you're below that, you'd be, you know, under 1. So as an example of how the data gets adjusted, let's say State X has that $1,000 educational appropriation again. To adjust by EMI, if they have an EMI of 0.95, you divide that into the $1,000, and that takes you up to 1,053, and then to tack on the cost of living adjustment number, 1,053 divided by a COLA of 1.01 would actually take you down a little bit to 1,043. Thanks everyone for being patient with that. I, I do think it was important. I thought it was really important though to give you some context and because um, I found that not everyone realizes how the data is adjusted all the time. So I really wanted to go through that. Um, so the, the next section of my presentation will focus on the national level findings. And I'm gonna concentrate on the last five, the last five year change, 2007 to 2012. So since 2007, enrollment grew 15.6% based on the FTE data that we collect from 2007, um, exceeding 11.5 million FTE in 2012, which is actually down slightly from 2011. So 2011 so far has been the high point. And again, for the third year in a row, educational appropriations per student hit a 25-year low. So the third year in a row, we hit, we hit the lowest number, and they're down to 5,906 in 2012, and that is down 23% since 2007. Net tuition revenue per student continued to increase, reaching $5,189 in 2012, and that's up 19.1% since 2007, and it now makes up 47% of total educational revenue. And another point to make on the national findings, tuition increases did not offset reductions in state and local support. Total educational revenue, you know, simply put, the sum of those two is down 7.9% since 2007. And these are all per student numbers, and they're all adjusted by our, our HECA, our inflation factor. Um, and expanding on the, the second bullet here, those educational appropriations per student declining for the third year in a row, to me, what was very interesting in the 2012 report was were the reasons behind that per student decline in educational appropriations, and bear with me here. The 2010 and 2011 declines were due almost entirely, and this is again on the national level, due almost entirely to just explosive enrollment growth. Um, we saw the two biggest years of enrollment growth in the history of the data that we have. Um, but the, but the funding level, again, nationally, when you rolled in the ERA funds, the federal stimulus funding, was essentially flat for those two years. Um, if you look at, if you, before you divide, before you factor in the enrollment growth. So funding stayed flat, enrollment skyrocketed, and, um, and you saw then, you know, serious declines in state support for fiscal year 10 and fiscal year 11. Um, in 2012, the opposite really happened. Your enrollment growth at the national level declined slightly, but the funding finally really dropped on the national level. And so we see another significant decline in per student funding due this year, due to, in 2012, to cuts in state, state and local support. And I think I want to reiterate one more interesting point in that nationally the 
as I said earlier, the increase in tuition revenue, um, you know, I know that gets a lot of attention at state and national level and media is focused on it. It's not offsetting these cuts. So it's not like, you know, institutions are swimming in extra money. A little bit more on the national data. Um, so here we have our wave chart, um, and this is the chart that gets a lot of attention each year. Um, it's always the first thing that my, my boss, Paul Ingenfelter, wants to see when, when I'm putting together the report. And all data are national and adjusted via our HECA inflation factor to $2012. So each one of these years, 1987 to 2012, is taken up to constant $2012. The blue bars represent educational appropriations per student, while the green bars represent net tuition. And the red line, um, kind of um, atop those two bars, is the um, enrollment trend. And what you see from this chart is the impact of recessions, where the blue bar drops. You know, you can see in 92, 93, we had a recession, and then 2002 through 2004, we saw a decline. And then you see the impact of the Great Recession beginning in 2009. Um, and these last two recessions have really nationally led to kind of a double hit because while recovery, according to these data, recovery began in 2006, 7, and 8, um, you didn't get close to your high point um, prior to the early recession of the early 2000s. And then the Great Recession hit and we saw precipitous declines in per student funding. Um, and then also through this chart, you can see the growing share coming from tuition the last couple of years, you know, now, you know, exceeding, um, you know, over $5,000, $5,189 in net tuition revenue per student. And to me, this is the most interesting report of the national um, section of CHEF. And this shows the share of total revenue coming from net tuition revenue. Um, so we take that total revenue and we divide out the, you know, what percentage is net tuition. And you just see the pink bars represent the last three recessions. Um, we're tracking 25 years of data. So in 1987, you see it was 23.3%. Um, and it was growing slightly, and then it kind of flattened out, and then we had a recession in the early 90s, and it skyrocketed up, exceeding 30%, where it, for the most part, stayed. It dipped below that a little bit, and then we had our recession in the early 2000s, and it went back up to 30% and has steadily climbed for a couple of years, and then the Great Recession hit, and the trend really, really skyrocketed. I mean, it went, it's now 47%. Um, nationally, and the year before it was 42.9%, I believe. Um, so, you know, we're really seeing a pretty significant growth, and we're inching closer to that 50% part mark, which, which will be, um, you know, that'll be an, be an interesting time when nationally our, you know, it's divided 50-50 between appropriations and net net tuition revenue per student. I want to talk a little bit about um, some of the state level findings. Um, this is probably the section that will be most interesting to you, and I'm not going to go through every state, but I'll highlight a few things. And, um, and then all these charts are available in our CHEF report, and I'm also going to point you to where we have some other state level data available on our website at the end of this um, webinar. Um, so our state level findings. All 50 states grew enrollment since 2007, um, ranging from 4.2% growth in California to 36.2% in Oregon. Um, so the and the average um, growth was 15.6% across the nation. Two states, Illinois and North Dakota, increased their per student funding over this same time frame since 2007. Um, but there's a big caveat with Illinois because they're increase in funding is really due to trying to play catch up on a historically underfunded pension program. So, um, you know, CHEF does its best to make, you know, collect comparable data from every single state. And But Illinois situation is very, very unique. And because of that issue, um, CHEF may not be the most accurate reflection of, of what's going on in that state. I think that's fair to say. Um, 48 states, though, the other 48, um, decreased 
constant dollar educational appropriations per student over this time frame. And the percent of total revenue, so this is like the state version of that 47% number I just talked about, ranges from 13.8% in Wyoming to 85.1% in Vermont in 2012. So a wide range of variance there. Um, and then in 36 states, that total educational revenue since 2007, despite those increases in net tuition revenue, did not increase. So nationally it didn't increase, and in you know, 36 states, so you know, a, a pretty good majority of the states it didn't increase. Highlight a little bit more about um, the state level figures. Um, and again, these come straight from the Chef Report. So you see a wide range of enrollment growth, and you can find your state on this on this trend line. Again, all 50 states grew enrollment between 20, 2007 and 2012. California had the lowest growth at 4.2%, and in fact, the last two years, they've actually declined enrollment. And it's really been, they've had some significant increases in tuition, and, or what they, you know, that's called fees in California. Um, although they're still well below the, the national average in net tuition revenue that they're getting per student, but they have seen significant increases. And they placed enrollment caps in some of their institutions as a means to address the budget shortfall in that state. So that state shows the smallest decline. Um, and then on, way on the other side, on the far right, you see Oregon at 36.2% and Idaho is at 36.0%. So since 2007, those two states have seen significant growth. Um, and again, these are all on percentages. So, you know, your, the size of your base impacts the percentage quite a bit. A um, couple more charts from our from the state level data and the report that I'd, I'd like to highlight. Um, again, overall educational appropriations per student are down 23% in constant dollars since 20, 2007. Um, you see the two states with the increases and 48 states have dropped. Um, the largest decrease is in New Hampshire at over 50%. Um, and that that is that happened. They cut their budget by half in 2012. So, and the Grapevine data last year gave us a gave us a sense that that was happening, um, and it it did play out. But again, you can see the you know the range of your you can find your state on that bottom line and and see the range. So this is the state by state view of that 47 percent that percentage of total revenues coming from net tuition. And right there in the middle, you see the, well, actually not quite in the middle, about 40% across, you see the red bar indicating the U.S. average of 47%. And you see a wide range um, shown here. And nationally, you know, I think this chart's really interesting to me because I think it really kind of sets your state in a position of where it's been historically. Um, and shows a lot of different ways of funding higher education. There's definitely no one size fits all, and I think that's clear from this chart. And I'm not saying that one way is better than the other, but there's just a lot of different ways to do things. Um, so you see on the right side, those states that I understand traditionally are high tuition states, Vermont and New Hampshire, you know, exceeding 80, 80%, 85.1 for Vermont, and also Delaware, you see the kind of the New England states, um, the top three. Um, and then on the left, you see the state of Wyoming at 13.8%. And, you know, Wyoming is a state that is a, under, I understand is a lot of revenue coming from oil and mineral and gas extraction and, you know, small population. So they put a lot of money and they put a lot of state support into higher education. And that's, that's really reflected here where they're getting most of their revenue from, from the state, from general funds. Um, so I think this really kind of lays out the history, as I said, but, just to point out, you know, history can really change, and I highlight the place I used to work, and I worked as budget director in Colorado. Um, when I provided chef data, Colorado was not, if you look at this chart, they're the fourth state over from the right. They're the fourth highest um, percentage of net tuition, percentage of total revenues coming through net tuition. And when, when I provided chef data, they were not close to that. They were kind of, I think, right in the middle, even slightly below average, to be honest with you. Um, it just really shows that history can change and how states have addressed this downturn 
and its impact on higher education budgeting is, you know, in some cases led to some really significant, um, you know, shifts in how it's done. Colorado um, used to be more in the middle of the chart, as I said, and now they had some pretty serious cuts in state support the last couple of years. And significant enrollment growth, they had saw some of the largest enrollment growth at, over that same time, and they really restructured their tuition policy. So, um, you know, that those changes are really evident in this chart. One more chart to highlight um, from the state level data, and this chart, again, for each state, shows the percent change in total revenue, and as I indicated earlier, um, the increases in net tuition are not offsetting cuts in state support on a per student basis, um, and so this is just continuing the theme of presenting data for the last five years and the percent changes of total ed revenue per FDE since 2007. Nationally, it's 7.9% decline, and 36 states show a decline in this metric. Um, only 14 have gone up. And for, so, again, one more time, tuition increases have not offset the reductions in state support. So I'd like to point out a few additional sources of CHEF data that are available on our website, and then um, talk about a few more things, and then we'll be ready for questions. Um, so this is like a this is a screenshot. This is an image of our our CHEF page on the SHEO website, um, and you can see you can click you know you can get your final report. You can view the press release, but then we have this about halfway down the, the web page, chef data and figures um, subheading, and then we've got four bullets there, and I want to point out three of them. Um, so the first one is the tables and charts from chef FY 2012 final report, and that's um, the first bullet there, and that shows, if you click on that link, you'll get, as a, you'll get a PDF with every single table and chart in the report, and you know, our hope with that is that you can, you know, copy those and put them into a PowerPoint, um, put them, them into your own PDF, use them to, you know, draft a memo, and hopefully, you know, this data will be, you know, something that, you know, you can use in your state to show how you compare to the nation um, on these various metrics. The next thing to point out is the second bullet point, the all chef data table. and. I've already talked about HECA getting some criticisms. I get that. I EMI and COLA, I know those are, you know, I know not everyone agrees that those are good things to do. And um, so if you want the raw data, the unadjusted data, um, that is provided here. And um, while I don't have an image of the actual spreadsheet, it's from 2000 to 2012, every single state and U.S., and it's, it's kind of all the big big numbers that you guys give us. And then we also provide you right there, your EMI, your COLA for your state, and, and the HECA adjustment factor and a description of how to make those adjustments. So, you know, you could take your data and just adjust for inflation, or you could not do that, or you could just adjust for EMI. You know, you've got a lot of, hopefully from here, it's just a big Excel spreadsheet, and you can use it to um, do your own analyses. That's, that's SHEO's hope with that. And then finally, um, the CHEF report, um, includes that national wave chart, and I've said that that gives, you know, that gets probably the most attention in the actual report, and that's what every reporter wants to see. Um, but we we construct those for every state as well, and you can get that um, from either that third or fourth bullet there. Um, the third one is a PDF um, of each state, so, you know, you just scroll through, find your state, um, one per page, and then the last bullet is the same information, and it says an Excel doc, and that's where I always send people to because the very first tab of that Excel doc is document is all the ordered data. So you can, in addition from this starting point, the fourth bullet there, in addition to getting your state's wave chart, you can get the data that that chart builds off of. Um, and I want to point out that that data, while because we're here we're only presenting one state at a time, we're not making those enrollment mix or COLA adjustments. And so here you get your state's wave chart adjusted only for inflation by HECA. 
So you get all that data. You get 25 years of enrollment plotted out on the red line, and you get your blue bars with, for your educational appropriations, and you get the green bars covering net tuition. Um, and so I, I think so I think a lot of states are aware that this data is out there, but I'm I really want to make it clear. Um, and so and right there at the bottom on the left of the page, you can see um, the web link for how to get there. So Chef did get a lot of attention this year, and I think. This is what I didn't realize when I was in Colorado that a lot of people do pay attention to Chef Report. And um, in between the embargo release of the report and the actual release was a busy two days for me um, and folks over here. Um, we had some big articles released in the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times, and then a couple of days after the on the very first day, along with you know the Chronicle and Inside Higher Ed and the and the Higher Education um, you know media outlets. NPR did, did a story nationally, and there's also, um, I think, some local public radio stations did some stories. Um, the Atlantic ran a couple interesting pieces um, using Chef Data and um, as a starting point for some of their analyses that were posted on, on their website. Uh, and again, a lot, and a lot of local news sources, too. So Chef got a lot of attention this year. And this came across my desk. Um, last week, and we had worked with folks at the Center for Budget and Policy Priorities um, for the last month or two, <clears throat> excuse me, um, on some analyses that they were working on, and they released a policy brief entitled Recent Deep State Higher Education Cuts May Harm Students and the Economy for Years to Come. And they wanted to use recent data, so they, they started with Grapevine fiscal year 13 um, appropriations data at the state level, and they used, they took the enrollment data from Chef for 12, and then did a really conservative projection on to take that data to 13. Um, that actually, when I before I knew how they did the projection, I was a little nervous, but they used a really conservative method, I think. And then they took College Board tuition rate data. So you know, I've kind of talked about some of the issues with using Chef for these types of analyses entirely. And um, I think CBPP kind of addressed those issues and concerns, and um, we're able to, in most states, correlate larger tuition rate increases with larger cuts in state support. Um, and so there's a link to that report. I don't know um, if you all have seen it, but I highly recommend checking it out. Okay. Well, that is that concludes the uh, formal aspect of this presentation, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thanks again, everyone, for participating. Um, I, I hope it was beneficial. And um, again, any, if you do have any questions later, just give me a call or email me. Thank you.